This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and say hello to my little but not so little friend. This is the Intel NUC 9 Pro. NUC, NUC stands for Next Unit of Computing, and we reviewed these before, but typically they have about the brains and power of an Ultrabook, and they're about this size. This one, as you might guess, is a lot more powerful. We're going to look at it now. So there are two versions of this. There's the Quartz Canyon, which we have, and the Ghost Canyon. The Quartz Canyon is the one with an Intel Xeon processor. Yes, indeed. The E2286M. You can also get it with a Core i7-9850H. So Intel 9th generation versions. They haven't come out with the 10th generation yet. So those of you who follow these things know that these are 45 watt CPUs, usually found in mobile workstations and high performance big laptops, uh, not an old books and that sort of thing. So that's where this comes in as a compact and modular alternative that's bigger than the teeny weeny little nucks, but still so small. I mean, you can fit that anywhere. And the thermals on this design is really very good. So you're not going to run into the heating problems. But a CPU is nothing without a GPU. And indeed, it has two PCIe slots. One's an X16 slot. It can even take a double wide card. Intel sent it to to us with a NVIDIA Quadro P2200 card, and that's made by PNY, the particular one we have it. So if you're going to go with the i7 version, you're more interested in gaming and not in mobile workstation, CAD, AI kind of work and all that sort of thing, there is a GeForce card, a G GT, uh, an RTX, excuse me, 2070 actually. Now this can only take a card up to eight inches long. So you would think, how does that happen? Well, ASUS happens to make what they call the dual mini. So it's like $420 and it has the performance of a full desktop RTX 2070. So that's the alternative for you. The thing about the NUC 9 Pro, I mean, not that Intel NUCs are cheap, but boy, this thing is on the expensive side, though. So you're buying it for the modularity, the ease of upgrading it, and the fact it fits anywhere and has good thermals compared to a laptop with the same 45-watt H-series or Xeon M CPU inside. It's about $1,500 starting price for the i7 version and can get up to near $2,000 for the Xeon that we have. So, ouch. Now, that doesn't get you a RAM or SSD necessarily, though if you go to Simply Knock, there are a reseller of these or Amazon, you can find them for around that price with some RAM and SSD in there. There are two RAM slots on the teeny weeny little motherboard, and we're going to take it apart because it's all kind of fun and cool. It's tinker time, you know? Uh, two RAM slots, DDR4-2666 megahertz RAM, just like you'd see on a laptop. So you can go up to 64 gigs of RAM. Ours happens to have 32, if you want to keep that in mind when you look at the benchmark results that we got. You have two M.2 NVMe SSD slots also supporting SATA 3 on that little motherboard connected to the PCH. And hidden down below by the power supply, there is another M.2 drive connected to the CPU board. And aha, uh -huh. so here's the thing, you can do RAID 0 and RAID 1 with that pair of M.2 SSDs if you wish to do so. This is a baby desktop PC, so obviously you don't use this thing unplugged. Now there's no separate power brick on this one. It's The power supply is built into the unit right near the bottom section and it has its own little dedicated fan, just like a miniature desktop PC. So that's nice. You don't have any extra big power bricks going on here. It can support graphics cards, by the way, going back to that up to 225 watts in power requirements. And you have six plus two pin connector and a six pin connector available. As long as you find a card that fits eight inches or shorter, like I said too. In terms of performance on this, it's very good, and we saw no thermal throttling. Even in benchmarks, say Fire Strike and the CPU intensive part of that, we usually we see CPU temperatures in the mid 90s in a laptop with these kinds of CPUs, and we're seeing instead in the 70s, sometimes even the 60s centigrade. So the cooling is good. Now, both sides are mesh grills, and they slide out very easily. If you want to take the top off, which has two large fans in it, it's just two Phillips head screws, you slide that off, and then you can lift up both sides. So it's easy access, but also easy cooling. That's a lot of ventilation, given the kind of CPU that we have in here, and even GPU. Even with the RTX 2070, that's good ventilation, so I don't see that as a problem. It's not very loud either. By the way, the case is nice, and it's beefy. Now here's the modular thing that gets a little bit different and a little bit interesting. Is it more cost effective? I don't know. We won't know until we see next generation cartridges. But you can get 
the little next unit of computing out with just one screw. It slides in just like something that goes into a PCIe slot in a desktop computer. And you can slide out the whole gosh darn compute unit. So if you wanted to upgrade to the next generation, you could swap a new one in. Again, that would depend on how much of those costs and if and when they would become available for 10th generation. When it comes to getting inside of it, like I said, easy to do. When it comes to getting to the GPU slides, very easy. Once you take the top off and one side cover, world's your oyster for getting to the GPU. If you want to get to the motherboard, you take, have to take out the graphics card. If you have put one in, you could just use it using the Intel UHD 630 integrated graphics, but probably given the horsepower here, enthusiast level, you're going to put a GPU in. But anyway, once you take out the GPU, there's a little pop open door so you can quickly access the RAM and the top M.2 SSD slots, which is very nice. If you want to get to the stuff at the bottom, you take out the whole NUC, next unit module that's inside. In terms of ports, there's plenty of ports here. We have two Thunderbolt 3. We have a mess of USB-A ports on here. You have HDMI and whatever graphics connectors that the GPU of your choice is going to have on the back as well. Front and rear audio jacks supporting SPDIF out of the rear. You get the idea. So connectivity is good. And two gigabit Ethernet connectors as well. And you've also got a full-size SD card slot on the front. So that's the Intel NUC 9 Pro. It's really the coolest thing. The only thing that hurts is the price on this. Um, I suppose now that people are doing work at home a lot, for those of you who are looking for a very compact, powerful kind of PC that isn't a giant, noisy, hot tower, well, this would be it. And the modularity and the, the, the tinkerability of it is just kind of, you know, it, it tickles my inner geek a lot, but hey, it's a lot of money, so you decide. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.